<laughs> nice. Yeah, I think that was by far one of the grossest things I've done. I mean, the seaweed is endless. Hi, hey, hey, <clears throat> hey, if you watched last week's video, you know that we are in Mar Menor. We are on 3 meters of depth with 50 meters of chain out. The lagoon is environmentally troubled and as a result the bottom is thick weed and no anchor grabs ever. Everyone just skids around as if we had no ground tackle. Watch this video if you want to know what happens when you have to leave a weedy anchorage in high winds. Things could have turned nasty but you know us, they didn't. We rather tell you what to pay attention to instead of starting a kickstarter because we put our boat on the rocks. <clears throat> It's everywhere. I mean, it's look, it's up until here on my legs. <laughs> Are you ready for a run? <laughs> my name is Alex and this is Mandy. We spent the last two years in the Met and now we want to make our way out of there. We take the long way to show you all kinds of places. I'm a glass half empty kind of guy, but I want to change that. Mandy helps me see the little things. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. We cannot wait to show you this. And this is our home. Lava Blue Juice, damn it! Not again! It's the best boat in the world because it's ours. So this chap ran aground on the beach and we felt like we don't want to follow his footsteps. We didn't feel comfortable on the lee shore either, so we decided to lift and it was quite interesting. We were held by the weight of the chain, not the anchor, as everything was covered in weed and the anchor didn't grab at all. So once we started lifting the chain, we started dragging. The more we lift, the more we go towards shore. With the chain covered in weed, we couldn't pull it up quickly enough and I kept the boat in place by going into gear. We had about 20 knots of wind on the nose. But the more many plucked weed off the chain, the more weed gathered on rudder and prop, making the boat less maneuverable. So that was quite tricky. It's definitely good to know about this risk and plan an effective exit beforehand. We'll wrap this up later in the video. Nice. Yeah, I think that was by far one of the grossest things I've done. I mean, the seaweed is endless. We watched a movie of somebody that said that there was no seaweed in Mar Menor. Well, I can confirm the opposite. It is one big piece of seaweed and it smells so bad. I mean, the mud, it's just so gross. And the wind is so strong, every time I tried to throw it off, it just flew back on board, so the whole boat covered in this black smelly muddy seaweed now i really need a shower <laughs> i feel so dirty <laughs> it's everywhere i mean it's look it's up until here on my legs it's on my face probably it's just so nasty doing good I believe in something else, I believe in now I believe this time for us Give me pat and pen Cause I lose my words when you're around And I'm scared to death Maybe I've been figured out We're just moving to another island It's just about four miles, it's not really far It's just that the next couple of days Or actually a week we're gonna have south winds southwest winds that's why we're also staying in Mar Menor because we want to go southwest and we won't be able to go there and also the waves will build up pretty big outside because it's really blowing through the Gibraltar Strait into the Med and we are now going to another island just to hide on the other side of that one you ready of course again again and a very short seal huh it's a menor sail. I think it took longer to get the anchor up than uh, to actually sail down here. The 
the anchor is dropped in a new place. We are now behind another island and except for some strong gusts that came down the island when we arrived, it's now really calm, quiet. We ate some homemade bread that I just baked freshly this morning. Not much left. It tasted very good. And um, while well, the sun is setting and we're both kind of reading about preparations for Atlantic crossing. So what do we have to do with the boat? What do we need? What do we still need to fix? So we're doing our best to prepare. Don't know if we will actually do it this year. It really depends on many things, mainly Corona. <laughs> but let's see how it goes. Do you want to watch City Lights and eat popcorn with me? Of course. A new movie theater. How was your day? Good. Yours? Pretty awesome. Why? Except for the weed part. It was quite, quite nasty job. Mm, yeah. How was it for you? I mean, I was just working on the anchor. You said it was complicated back here. So I was on the wheel, um, Mandy picked up the anchor. We also had 20 knots of wind on the nose. Yeah. So I then usually just push forward for, I don't know, a few seconds and then go back into neutral. And then on neutral refs, I go back up again as fast as I can. So the power is back on the windlass. Yeah, because otherwise the strain on the chain with the wind is just so high. It really feels not good for the windlass. I don't know if it's actually bad, but it feels wrong. So we mostly then going yeah. forward just to help a bit. But because it took so long, and Mandy put the weed off the chain and it just floated in the water. And it actually got hit by keel and rudder and also on the prop. Yeah, I was already afraid of that. I mean, the batches of weed I took off were really, really big. Even on the chain, it was massive. Yeah, so I didn't notice that. It's also not too bad. You just lose a bit of steerage. But it's relevant when behind you there's two meters of depth and an island and then at one point you start dragging because you just have not enough chain up but you can't get it back in quickly because it's all full of weeds. And I was really worried about getting the chain in fast because the weed was so thick I didn't want to get it into the windlass I was afraid I might clog it or, you know and then yeah. we're really screwed so. Yeah, so then we have a bit of dangling chain that doesn't do much. Mm. We have a clogged prop and 20 knots that push us to the island. So yeah. it was actually <laughs> quite difficult to get out of there. So then when the chain was up and Mandy set to go, I revved up to 2000 and uh, then I saw all the weed come off the rudder and the prop. And it actually took a while until it all was, a, was gone. Mm. It's just... It was a lot. It was a lot of stuff, yeah. And then I wasn't even really done yet because then the anchor was so filled with weed I couldn't get it onto the bow roller because the weed was so thick and so much mm. had to take it off and then you had to stop because I had to clean the anchor and you were dragging back again so <laughs> yeah. Here in, in Mar Menor you regularly see boats leaving instead of an anchor they just have a bush <laughs> yeah. of seaweed and with that they go back to their marinas and then probably clean it there so um, hopefully that won't happen when we're leaving here but i'm afraid it's going to be the same thing it's just that before we had all the chain out because we really didn't want to drag about 50 meters and uh, now we only put out 30 so i hope we're just not going to swing around and scrape the whole weed out in the anchorage well we're going to let the people here celebrate birthday and we're going to enjoy the city lights and eat popcorn good night people Bye bye. I hope the issue came across and you could see where you would run into trouble. The main problem was the weed clogging the steering and the boat slowly approaching the shallows. Today I would probably try a different approach. While still on anchor I would try to bring the boat to the opposite side, to windward, and stay in backwards gear, stern towards the wind. This way the steerage wouldn't be bothered by the weed. I could easily control the pressure on the windlass by occasionally letting the wind push the boat a bit more onto the anchor and the boat itself would stay in the wind way better than if I was facing the wind with the bow. But what do I know, it's just an idea. I 
Are you ready for a run? <laughs> I'll watch you. I'm not going to pretend that I'm any good at this. And I'll probably run for like six minutes. <laughs> if I make that even. But at least I get out. And then yesterday when we went into town, we found this, well, very Spanish bakery. They sell croissants for 40 cents and they're really quite good. So it's gonna be my reward after a six minute run. It's all of a sudden leaking oil. Yeah. Our engine's keeping up very good though after the last swim it took. It takes a bit longer to revive sometimes, but mostly it goes on almost immediately. And it hasn't failed us yet. Although it might fail us today. Ah. No. I made it. It was 11 minutes, pretty good. But now we are having a very typical Spanish breakfast. The Spanish people always have sweet breakfast. So Alex got a, a chocolate milk hot one actually in 30 degrees and further what they do typically is have something called pan tostada con tomate so they give you like a, a nice roasted baguette you put some olive oil on it and then some tomato very typical Spanish it's quite nice so I can eat that so what do you think of the pan tostada con tomate delicious yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, 12 30 or something, and uh, Alex is asleep, but I'm still working. I like evenings, it's not that hot, so it's a time of the day where you can actually work. I still got quite something to do, but it's, um, it's fun because. <laughs> There was a party boat behind us. Actually, there were two and they were both playing their own music, but they somehow stopped. And then instead there was one over there and I think it's a boat, but I'm not really sure. And they turn on the music so loud. It's like a club and it's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm having my own party on the bow. I'm gonna go back to work now. Since Marmenor is about 5 meters deep everywhere, you could basically anchor anywhere. So today we decided to anchor in front of this incredibly long beach. This place is called Los Alcazares and it is a very old town. It was occupied by the Romans in 210 BC. The strange thing is that the place doesn't feel ancient at all. It feels like a regular relaxed Spanish town filled with little restaurants and bars. You can get wine or beer for as little as 1 euro or breakfast for about 2 euros. Spain is very much alive in the early morning. The long beach is used by joggers. The cafes are filled with people having cafe con leche and their pan tostada con tomate. These affordable prices show a big part of Spanish culture. In local establishments it is extremely affordable to go out for food and everyone does. People usually eat outside, together. In the afternoon the place seems deserted. People left for work or just hide from the heat at home. But once the sun starts to set, the place rapidly comes back alive again and everyone is back outside. Maybe this is just 2020 talking, but it seems this place deserves some more attention. You can see that things went very well and then very wrong here. The lagoon deserves some love and local tourism, because honestly, we had a great time here. Despite smelly water and 2020 being a punch in the face anyways. Look at this guys. This is mental today. The water is completely reflecting the sky. Everything's orange. It's beautiful. This is crazy. <laughs> I haven't seen such beautiful colors in a long time, so that's really cool. Tomorrow we are going to leave Mar Menor because uh, winds are coming. It's been a really good day. I'm uh, starting to feel boat life again. I'm happy we're here right now and haven't been happy with that, really happy with that. Since we left the marina in Valencia basically, so yeah. And we have a plan that feels good. We've been able to sleep and work for a while and uh, things are looking up. <laughs> By the way, I rediscovered wine. I never really understood why people drink a lot of alcohol because we never really do. But 
last two days we've been drinking just one glass of wine on an empty stomach. I'm feeling very happy and I don't feel bad in the morning, so I think that's my new recipe. <laughs> Next time we are leaving Mar Menor from where we came from with impeccable timing and no drama at all. We sail around the corner to tie up to the only free town key in all of Spain and leave early in the morning again before the fishermen got angry to go see Cartagena. Glad to have you around. You watching the videos makes STLT possible in the first place. If you haven't seen the story of Mar Menor, click the video on the left. It's a very good video. It says so in the title.